sounds i did the sounds all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back it's game number four here in this best of five if you got zerg questions we don't oftentimes have a lot of pros who are willing to uh chat in chat oftentimes we actually have quite a few pros who will hang out and chat once in a while but bly kind of just like taking questions he's been dropping the zerg knowledge bombs so if you got questions he's got answers i guess but uh spawning here in the bottom right corner of the map it's weird to think that this would be the situation but it's true Who's on his last life? Blizzard played true. In the top left, as the Red Terran, it's top. So most of the time, I think top falls to true. But that's Heart of the Swarm. And we're not playing Heart of the Swarm, it's Legacy of the Void. And True kind of very awkwardly handled the composition last game. There's no vipers. It was slow roaches. Again, why did he cancel like tunneling claws? Like what? Uh, a lot of things just really did not go well for him that game, despite the fact that he had the right idea of where to go. Top just played the way he needed to. Nice drops, good tank positioning, catching True off guard. Everything went pretty well for Top. Honestly, even in Legacy of the Void, I still would have expected True to do well, because True has done well. Another Legacy of the Void tournament. It's not like he's completely out of the loop, though he does still hesitate to use some of the new abilities and new units. So he's just a really, really good player where top is kind of on and off impressive, gets the semifinals, finals sometimes, not always type of deal. So I am still surprised that he's up to one and in pretty solid games at that, although the second game was a little wonky, I guess. He kind of got the. He kind of got a. You know, one of those Terran passes, not quite a get out of jail free card, but take $200 off your bail card. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, having a planetary and a, a lifted command center. But um, otherwise, the last game was just him taking good positioning, good fights. Mm. Yeah, it's funny too, because <coughs> first off, amazing analogy. But I, I don't know, like, it, just think about it again. Who's Ryung? Ryung was a player who also got to like the finals of like Legacy of the Alima League. Doing nothing but Heart of the Swarm strategies. I mean, it's it's absolutely possible within the realm of reason that True could stick with old school, adapt to nothing new, and still win if he's good enough and his opponent's bad enough. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think Top's going to be that level of bad enough to make that work. Not more than once or twice. Well, the the Roach thing was also something that uh, I don't know. I feel like he would be more comfortable with Muta Ling Bling. Roach Hydra was a tactic used in Heart of the Swarm more on a, you know, per map basis. And then, you know, it's mostly Ling Bling after that, so... True just always seems more impressive with Mutas, I guess. It's always, he was one of those guys that was always going to base Muta along with, like, Impact, you know? So I'd prefer to see that, whether or not top goes mech or bio. So interesting question coming from chat. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts before I answer mine, because I've got some pretty strong feelings on this. Uh, Terran Patriot asks, how do you feel about Legacy, and do you think it will revive the game and bring pros back who left pro gaming? There is no way to tell until they reveal more information about the social aspects, in my opinion. So my thoughts on this are no, just straight up no. But there's an asterisk with that no, because... Again, I don't know if this is going to happen or not, but so much of StarCraft 2, so much focus has gotten into story writing, into cinematics, into the single player campaign aspect of the game. If all of the resources dedicated to that suddenly become dedicated to the multiplayer, I think the multiplayer experience becomes freaking amazing. And it'll probably be like one of those relaunches, like what we saw Valve make CSGO go from this joke of a game to something amazing. I mean, I remember when they first announced CSGO God knows how long ago, and they're like, oh, it'll be available cross-platform, and you can play with your friends, and it ended up just being a joke, and no one played it. And that was, like, one of the biggest esports. So I feel like there's always the potential to fix a game, uh, especially when there's already got popularity behind it like StarCraft. It's just a question of if they do and how they do. And in they that an situation, I think it revives everything and brings people back. All right, they have an opportunity to bring everyone who buys the third expansion because plenty of people buy the game for the campaign for nostalgia for whatever reason but they don't play the multiplayer because it's too hard or they heard that it wasn't good or whatever they have a perfect opportunity to do to actually catch them and bring them to esports if they did everything correctly well, see, that's really like uh the sort of unannounced uh, like semi-announced ally commanders archon mode like yeah. these sort of more team aspects i think are gonna make it more alluring so only time can tell i think as the current state of the game goes like beta bugs with sanding and balance aside i still think it's a no but there's so many cool features we still haven't seen but anyways this um, attack gonna catch one of the queens that's a bit yeah. awkward 
Bailey's aren't ready for this yet either. Yo, I think Trio might just be good. He might be. I mean, he got a Bailey that's at a perfectly, you yeah, know, Yeah, but the Bailey's are coming over timing. here. Oh, like, that's what it was. He's going for the Bailey bus, and it's not going to work because he's got to deal with this defense at home. Then these Bailey's well, will, they will get out. Okay, I thought he wasn't going to have time to make these. Yeah, this just changes a lot oh. of things. I thought that's so kind of like automatically pre <laughs> That Reaper grenade blowing the Queen Corpse into the air. Uh, Link's do bust through the wall thanks to the ban links. We'll see how many SCV kills they get. Banshee gonna sit up here and try and uh, hold them off as long as possible. Uh, we'll barely get one of the Hellings up there in the main. Blow for blow and SCV for worse uh, for drone. They're on pretty even worker counts after this. Difference is the top hasn't been cleaned up yet. That Banshee is gonna be hell to deal with. Yeah, so I Queen think is not strong enough to take her on. Big top has done enough to warrant this going better for him, but it is messy for both parties. I mean, True still has a third base, for instance. Like, he managed to get that up before this whole uh, thing went down, <laughs> this trade went down. So, I, I don't know, but it's even workers, so that would favor the Terran. Uh, it's hard to say where everyone sits at right now. Yeah, give it another five minutes, we can really tell you who pulls ahead. But I think I think I want to say, like, because there's a third CC, I'm feeling a little bit better for Tops recovery to getting back on track to the normal game, so to speak. But he's also playing yeah. mech, so it's a bit slower in that regard, too. Mm, exactly. Just, <laughs> they got some good things, they got some bad things for both players. Another Banshee comes in here. It's going to get a couple more drones. In this case, every drone is really quite important. Yeah. Sure needs to get as many as fast as possible, and then he can get into the units, right? And he needs to get into the units so he can stop the mech player from getting three bases too easily, because that's when they kind of hit their stride. You know, that, that whole flow of the game. This kind of sucks, honestly, going to be the skill of Bane. She's going to ham on the drones in the meantime. <laughs> Brings back down to almost even. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the third hatch. We'll see if it comes into effect. The problem with this third hatchery is it's almost a big weakness right now, too. The wall hasn't been knocked down, so the Hellings could possibly run by. We've got the potential of drops. I mean, two Mutalists is not a police force to govern <laughs> or defend with. Uh, no. Uh, what it is going to try and transition to Roach is the same tactic, which can be so deadly to usual, you know, usual mech games, is not nearly as deadly when you are struggling to get that economy up. The idea is that you harass with the Mutas, you maybe get a couple of SCVs, more importantly, you make them go into the Thors or more missile turrets, and then you go into a very solid transition into 20 or so roaches. We saw that earlier in the series. If your transition is into like six roaches, it's not, it's not anything. Like, the mech player won't care. Man, so just kind of going back to the single player talk for a second. I am so stoked for that campaign. Like, there's so many things in the preview video they put out there that, like, I just... I don't care about the whole, like, choose and level up your hero and assign talent points and all that stuff. I just love Blizzard cinematics, and I'm, like, so stoked for Blizzard cinematics. You know what? I'm really happy because as the Protoss expansion, we won't see any more romance bullshit. <laughs> Or so we hope. They introduced like a girl Protoss like out of nowhere. I swear to God like, if they do. No, no, they did. Like in the trailer. Like is that Selendis or is that somebody else? I don't know because they all look the well, same. No, but she, she can be a not romantic interest. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I don't know, right? Son of a God. I think we're proof that you can't have non romantic interests. I swear to God I will kill all of you. No, After uh, that movie, it, I, whatever movie that was, I, you can't I, have a guy friends be non romantic. What was that movie? Like, like half the rom coms out there. <laughs> well, besides that, I mean the one like the defining one with like Billy Crystal. Oh, I don't know. Jeez. But I was gonna say I, regardless of like love interest BS or not, I just love that everything looks so badass, man. Like they've just they've really souped up. I don't know what they did to Artanis to make his like armor look so much cooler, but he just looks like a badass. He looks like a Debbie god or something. I don't know. Oh, three blue flame Hellions are gonna get out of this. Pulls the drones, but he's not paying attention because he's busy defending at home. So those Hellions could have just fried up that whole drone line, probably. Instead, waste all the shots of the queen that doesn't even die. Ones on the main are gonna be micro a little bit, though. Uh, you know, this yeah. has really called the drone camp quite a bit. They were both kind of slugging it out with workers before, but now Top has a very definitive lead and a fourth base. Yeah, True was taking damage in that natural. We're looking at the third base, so. And that's what happened there. And his Roach, Max, I mean, he's, he's going to get there eventually, as you would, no matter what. It's going to take a long time, though, and it looks like it's only going to be Roaches. This time with, hopefully, Tending Claws is going to finish. But only Roaches is not too difficult to deal with. And Top, he's not going to have a low tank count. He's going to have a pretty decent one.
Oh man, Mac, 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 Mac. I just total glass is gonna complete. I guess it's cool. <laughs> totally bummed that I didn't have my first time around. Without tanks, these Thors, these roaches, they could trade out. In fact, I'd say even in the favor of True, even with the Hellbats involved. But those tanks floating around those medevacs, those tanks getting maneuvered around, it's making it really hard to take fights. Mm, True's gonna go back into Mutus. He's getting an upgrade for them, but they're still not gonna be that scary. Hmm. Well, I guess, on one hand, if you can take out the Thors, there's really not a lot of anti-air, aside from the turrets. So that's maybe, you know, you take care of the Thors and training to take care of the tanks with the Mutas, vice versa. Uh, ooh, that's awkward. There we go. Huh. I totally forget that planetaries can house the CVs. I sort of remember that, like, regular command centers can, but... And if you get the upgrade, you can house even more. Oh my god, that's gonna be essential for the Banelink busts. Yo, know, I wish it was kind of like Age of Empires, where if you did put SCVs in there, I don't know, it would have an extra gun or attack at a faster rate of fire or something. It only makes sense, alright? Like, give them a little art, like, you know, bow and arrows, and have little, like, arrow slits in the planetary. <laughs> well, I don't even mean like that, but just, like, whatever the cooldown is on the Ibex cannon, like, they're in there repairing it so it, like, fires faster or something. I don't know. Like, some sort of benefit to actually put them in the planetary, so just mass repair it. Kind of cool. Little marine fire. Trade out your drills. Grab a gauze rifle. Uh, now, true is setting up some tech, but unfortunately, it's kind of all. It's all gonna be a little bit too late. He's only got really roaches to work with. This is gonna be a hard fight to take. If there's no scan, if he gets underneath these tanks with tunneling claws, great. He actually is gonna annihilate these tanks, but that's not gonna happen. Hmm, counterattack might be the only way to go, but he's already lost one base trade. This one's gonna be versus a mech player who has some defenses at home. Oh dear god. Already so many roaches going down yeah. just makes base trade impossible. Muta's also dwindle a number pretty quickly to the Thors and the Liberator. Uh, here comes the tanks back at home to defend. This is not looking good for true. No, sir. No, no, no. He remaxes, or, well, not really, but he gets up there in supply with more roaches, but again, they inflate supply. He didn't really do a lot of damage to top. Oh, and, uh, Jesus. The only thing True can go for him right now is that he has a pretty baller economy, and he's on a lot of bases still, and he's losing the one. And uh, he can remax easily with roaches, but only roaches aren't going to win you this game. No, definitely not. As he pushes through the middle of the map, though, I mean, he's just kind of running towards death, it feels. I don't know if you can take a good defensive fight because of the way tanks will force out the engagements, but for true sake, again, he's playing without vipers. No abdocks, no blinding clouds. He's playing without lurkers, without hydro. It's like, he just doesn't have anything other than these tier one bad units for this situation. Yeah. He's trying to transition into mutas, which, hey, that's... That's a pretty good desperate maneuver if you're if you're desperate. You know the chance that they forgot they don't they need doors or they they uh, don't have any missile turrets and liberators take too long to get out. I don't know something like that. And maybe you can make it work, but it is a hail mary. A pretty lost game. Oh no! Totally close on the tanks, not the doors. <laughs> what? True. True's falling apart, stopping Govins is so heartbreaking because I love True so much. Yeah. Unfortunately, while it is farther in the league for most people, this is a round of five match, but still, for most people, like we're getting to the, uh, the round of nine later on today, we aren't familiar enough with the scores to really, unfortunately, hype up whether this is important or not. Um, I don't think anyone something... ever gets too serious with the scores until it comes down to the last two weeks worth of matches. Yeah, I guess it's the last two weeks, I've last three weeks, but still, it's getting to that point where we really should be paying attention more to who's in the very bottom, who's in the middle, who has no chance to lose whatsoever on the top. Well, still shuffling around and fighting for it. I'll give it the truth, he's got a huge middleist flock. I can totally understand trying to stick in this game, but with two liberators at a time, a Thor here and there as well. I don't know, I don't feel too scared for top. I really don't. No, no. The Liberators are going to be 
pumped out, they can be reactive if you guys didn't know, and then they're gonna be able to deal with the mutas. I mean, even if the mutas spread oh, and split, it's gonna, it's gonna have enough anti-air. Fine. Is that one in its second mode? No, none of them are. Oh, okay. The shot just looked really weird. It sounded different. I'm crazy. It's so dumb. I hate it. Like, for those who don't know, the actual missiles, they really come out of these two little slits in the chest next to the next to the pilot. This is me off because we've got these giant ass cannons and I just wish they'd use them. <laughs> like I can like almost like fireworks or like a bar, a barrage to the sky would be so much cooler than like dinky little missiles. Oh, well, the mutas really are doing an, a nice amount of damage. They've cleared up a base, they've cleared out a couple mineral lines, and the important ones too, you know, the ones that are mining. This yeah. top is mined out in the natural and main. But true is also only on like one, barely two mining bases. Mutas really are is saving grace here. It might be the trick though. It, I mean, it's getting him time. We've talked about this before. The hardest thing to get in StarCraft 2 is not minerals or gas, it's time. I really, I think if Top had just kept pushing and let reinforcements deal with the ones that were attacking the uh, fourth or the fifth, whatever you want to call it, ooh. I think he already wins. Uh, I agree, for sure. But hell, you run by, so trying to keep that drone count low-ish. Top's really uh, running out of money. He needs to huh, find a secure base and get the missile turrets back up. Yeah, not to mention like start like just getting it some safe muling down. I don't know where he's been muling, but uh, energy low and not a lot of income to show for it. Yeah. Just he's gotten unlucky with where he's sending his units. Wherever the Liberators go, they're the Roaches, not the Mutas, and you know, vice versa for the where the Siege Tanks go. And Liberators just don't have the time in this game that's getting kind of scrappy to, you know, be the Siege units and Siege up a base and, and just stay there as the, you know, the perfect defense. They need to be going around and chasing the Mutas. They are trying to do, but another base already goes down. He still has a couple more orbitals, plus the ones that his main and natural take, but those Muta's magic box on top of the Liberators, the Liberators aren't microed away either. And all the Liberators are down. True might have something here with the Muta's. If you can magic box all the Thors, Thors are stupid. But he needs more Muta's, but he's going back into Roaches. Ah, uh, It's tough. Two up decisions here for True. Oh god, that, that was good. That was Can good he hit. get another shot off though? He's got the medevac loaded up. No boost. Oh, it's on cooldown. A little unfortunate. Yeah, he was a little distracted too. Roach is just not plentiful enough, and not without good upgrades either. That I think, I think he saw how few tanks there were, you know, in the grand context of an 18-minute game. But really, he still doesn't have enough roaches. Really? Yo, right now I look at this right, and it's not so much about like who's ahead, it's about who just refuses to die more. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here comes the oh. Thors. Mutas are not yeah, clapped, though. Yeah, they all target like, the one on the very left. Thanks, Thors. Uh, so that's some decent shots off. We should be able to hold off the roaches with the Thors, too. This is where if Chu had 2,000 minerals and nothing else, a Ling Flood could do something. There's been no Hellions. Uh, Orbital will barely survive by the looks of it. I like the shuffle on the Thors, though. Oh, ooh! Ooh, well, the that's the Mutas. Trying to chase. Hey. That's the Muta's gone. That was True's biggest, best way back into the game. Roaches aren't going to cut it. GG's going to be called. And Top, ladies and gentlemen, will knock True down with a 3-1 score, winning this best of five.